To get started on making the fuse, this is all the equipment you'll need. The reagents you're going to need are potassium nitrate, sugar, gunpowder, which I made in a previous video, and some 100% cotton string. These are just heat resistant gloves. You'll need them for a future step, uh, although they're not completely necessary. I would recommend them. So to begin, you're going to want some sugar and potassium nitrate in a 1 to 2 ratio. So for every gram of sugar you have, you want 2 grams of potassium nitrate. A minimum batch that you can do is probably about 20 grams of sugar and 40 grams of potassium nitrate because you're going to need to get a solution to saturation with these two ingredients. Because I've done this before, I'm only making a batch with 10 grams of sugar and 20 grams of potassium nitrate, just to show you. Um, but later on, when I put it in a pan, I'm going to add some previous solution that I saved. And the best thing about this is if you don't use it all, you can just save whatever's left over. Straight after stirring, I add the two salts to a pan and I turn it on medium low to low heat. Here's just a little bit of water. You don't want to add too much. I probably would add 20 milliliters for every, I don't know, 40 grams of solution that you have. Again, it doesn't really matter. You just want to eventually get it to saturation. Anyways, now you take your cotton, your uh, string of cotton, and just measure out a decent length. You don't want it too long, don't want it too short, whatever feels right. Again, because this isn't chemistry, it's kind of like whatever you really want. Um, and the more experience you have, the better it's going to be. Given experience, what I found is that you have to burn the tips. If you don't burn them, they're going to unwind, and it's just going to be a nightmare, and you're going to lose a lot of what would be fuse. So burn them, preferably outside, and yeah, you'll be good. So here's me adding an old solution of potassium nitrate and sugar. Kind of looks like applesauce now, I don't know. You know, like once you boil it, you're trying not to get the sugar to caramelize. If it caramelizes, it gets a little bit yellow and I don't know. I just have the best results when it's not caramelized. So here's me adding it and it kind of looks like applesauce. I mean, it's completely edible, right? Like you have potassium nitrate, you have sugar. You could eat it if you wanted to. You could even eat the fuse or gunpowder. I mean, they used to use gunpowder as like seasoning. Anyways, uh, yeah, let's just move on. So this is probably the scariest part. Um, you don't need to do this. I don't recommend you do this. But pretty much what's going to happen is after we coat the fuse in the potassium nitrate and sugar solution, you're going to need to roll it around in gunpowder. You know, kind of like you're deep frying something. you got to, like, bake it. I mean, this is kitchen chemistry after all, right? you got to have a little bit of kitchen in there. So just to make sure my gunpowder is, like, incredibly fine... I'm going to be blending it in a metal coffee grinder. Probably don't do this. I was kind of scared doing it. I mean, it's fine. Gunpowder isn't really a sensitive explosive. Like, it doesn't... It's barely even an explosive, right? Like, anyways. Um, I was very tentative about doing this step. You don't need to do it. But I wanted it to be very, very fine. Because the finer it is, the better your fuse will burn. Next, I transfer my very fine gunpowder to this little tray that I'm going to need to use. And you're going to need to have your saturated solution of potassium nitrate and sugar on the stove and hot. And then you're going to have your gunpowder in some little area where you can dip your string in after it has been soaked in the solution. So a saturated solution kind of looks like this. You can see the little flakes as it's crystallizing on the surface of the liquid. Anyways, it needs to stay hot so the solubility of the sugar and potassium nitrate stay high. And then I'm going to add the string into this little bath. I did some work off camera and cut some more string. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to try and straighten it out and then put it in the solution, trying not to make it have knots or anything. And then you're just going to keep it there for 30 seconds to a minute just trying to really soak in all the potassium nitrate and sugar into the string and keep it interlaced between all the little strands that are in there.
once you think it's been long enough. Again, like, timing doesn't really matter, it's just whatever you feel is right. I don't really know any other way to put it. But I felt that this was long enough, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab a small little strand of the string, and then I'm going to scrape off all the excess potassium nitrate. Now, this is the trick. This is what will make your uh, fuse good or bad. You need to scrape off just enough, but not too much. So here I'm scraping it off a little too hard, and you'll see that my fuse gets very, very thin, and it burns. It's a good fuse at the end, but it could have been better. So every batch and how much you scrape it is going to be different. So I would recommend you maybe make three or four, and you play around with how much pressure and how much you actually put off. I'll show you what it's like squeezing very, very hard and squeezing not at all. And you'll notice that the one that you squeeze not at all, the gunpowder doesn't actually stick to it very well. And then additionally, the fuse is just so thick, you're never going to be able to use it for anything. I want to use these for a firecracker, so I need it to be thin. However, in hindsight, I probably wouldn't have squished as hard as I did. Here's a better view of what I'm seeing. So you can tell that this is saturated because you have the potassium nitrate and sugar actually crystallizing out on the top of the dish. And the solution is hot, the solubility is high, and this means that the most amount of potassium nitrate and sugar is actually going to penetrate into the string. Here's what it looks like once it's been like laced with the gunpowder. Once all the string has been moved to the gunpowder, I shook it around, just made sure everything was well coated. And this is the string that I didn't actually squeeze. So you can tell, it's just massive, okay? It's very, very thick. You're not gonna have hopes of putting that in a firecracker, but I did it anyway just to show you guys the two contrasts. In the end, I'll show burn time, how well each of them burn, if they burn through things, so you can tell which one you want to make. These are the thinner ones. So what I'm doing is I'm just scraping off all the little powdered gunpowder that's on there. I'm not pushing. I'm just barely running my finger along the edge of the string and just allowing any excess gunpowder to just fall off. I'm putting these on a baking tray so that we can put them into the oven at 200 Fahrenheit and just allow all the extra moisture to bake off. Once you do this, they'll become stiff and look like legitimate fuses. Once they were all laid out, this is what it looks like. So the one closest to me is the thick fuse and you can just tell it's just bigger the other ones are quite thin meaning i definitely push too hard but i'll show you a comparison i do have some old fuses that i'll use uh just so that you can get a good idea of how much pressure is good there's this, i believe there's like a golden spot there's no other youtube videos about this like i've watched other videos about how to make a fuse this is just from my own experience and what i found is best so what i'm doing now is i'm just sprinkling some gunpowder over little white spots that i see on the fuse and this is just in hopes that potentially the moisture coming up out of the string would bond to the gunpowder and allow it to cake on better. You don't need to do this. I, I just think it's better personally, but I don't think it actually makes that much of a difference. I'm not rich by any means, so I had to actually recycle my ingredients. You can do this too, it's not that bad. I just take the potassium nitrate and sugar, add it back to a little jar and store it for later. With the gunpowder, I just pour it onto a paper sheet and then I add it back into my little Gatorade bottle full of gunpowder. Nice and safe. All right, the timer went off, it's been 30 minutes. So I take the fuse out of the oven and that's pretty much it. We're completely done making the fuse. The next bit of the video will just be burn times, how well it burns, the difference between thick and thin. You can see that it's much thicker and the moisture has definitely baked off. There's still a little bit in there. 
um, but this all evaporated off because the fuse was still pretty hot. Here's a comparison for the thickness of the two I made, thick and thin. That one is much too big to use in a firecracker, or really anything, I don't have a use for it. But there's a smaller one which I'll definitely use in a future video. Now that everything's done, I can cut up the fuse and store it in little jars. A future video will be about me making firecrackers, and these past two videos about gunpowder and this one about the fuse are just leading up to actually making the firecracker, so pretty much anyone can make it at home. The previous videos about hydrazine sulfate or nickel hydrazine nitrate, like as fun as those are, unless you have the budget and the equipment, you can't really do that. So hopefully this is something that everyone can do, although don't do it unless you're a trained professional and take no responsibility and yeah, just don't do it. Now we get to the fun part of the video, burn tests, woohoo! These are equal length, so you'll see how well they burn. Up first is the fat one, so as you can tell, this burn is going to be much more aggressive, and you can see little sulfur bits, those are the white blobs. That tells me that I didn't mix my gunpowder fine enough. The smaller one is much more tame, and just a better burn if you want to use the fuse for anything. So this just proves that you need to scrape off the excess uh, sugar potassium nitrate solution. It's a must. This is just to show you that the small fuse can't be shaken out. I wasn't going to do this with the big fuse because I don't really want sulfur bits landing on me. But you can tell I'm trying to shake up the flame. It doesn't work. So it proves that this is a decent fuse. Good enough to use anywhere you want. This next test is the fuse burning through a dry medium. So the small fuse burns nice and tame all the way through the medium. You can see the smoke kind of lay on top. And then at the other end, you see it spark just a bit to prove that it went all the way through. And I don't know why, but it just stops. It doesn't burn the entire fuse. The same thing happens for the bigger one. It burns all the way through, much more aggressive this time. And just like the other one, it burns all the way through, sparks at the other end, and then just stops. These last few tests are the fuses burning through a wet medium. The sand was slightly damp because it was rain. And one of them burns all the way through, the other one doesn't. And this just shows that there's a happy medium. You need to scrape off just enough potassium nitrate and sugar to make it small, but not too much to make it too small. Like, I can't tell you how much pressure to put on. You just kind of need to experiment for yourself and figure out which is the best amount to scrape off. So this one doesn't even burn through. But if you don't get your firecrackers wet or whatever you're using it for wet, the small fuse will work just as good as the big one. Anyways, thanks for watching. See ya.